Without question, the single most powerful tool in the Windows Toolkit is the Registry Editor. The Registry Editor can be summoned with either RegEdit or RegEdit32, both in current versions of Windows, including Windows 7 we have here, linked to the exact same location. I do, do understand that the Registry Editor is a very powerful tool and can create problems that you cannot uncreate. So without knowing what you're doing, be very careful. Only play with the Registry Editor on a test machine until you're absolutely certain you understand what you're doing, and then from there you can start using it on other machines. Always make a backup, always make a restore point before doing anything. When we open the Registry Editor, we see that it basically breaks things down into five different areas. These are known as hives or H keys, uh, depending upon what you want to refer to them as. In essence, we really only have two. We have the H key local machine, and we have H key users. Everything specific to the user themselves lies underneath H key users. Everything specific to the machine itself is under H key local machine. H key local machine has several subsets beneath it, one of which is the current configuration and the other of which is the class's root. So both of those are actually subsets beneath HKey Local Machine. Beneath all the users that use the machine, we of course have a subset which would be the current user. So HKey Current User is actually just a subset of HKey Users. All of these hives can be opened up and their values looked at and changed. Let's start off with Local Machine and you'll see that by default everything is always in alphabetic order. So we have hardware, the security uh, accounts manager, security itself, software and systems. Let's look beneath software and then again here we have every vendor uh, in alphabetic order. Let's go to Microsoft and we'll just drop down to Windows and from Windows we'll choose current version and here you'll see some specifics about the current version of Windows. Let's expand that and take a look at what we have. We have a couple of things that we're going to look at. Number one, we'll look at run. Anything that is in run is what will configure itself to go every time the system starts up. So in this case, we have Adobe Reader Speed Launcher, um, a couple of things associated with Microsoft Security Client, and the Java update and such. Anything that is in run once will run the next time the system starts up. So in this case, we have a reminder coming up from Dell the very next time the system is started. In either of these, you can add additional values. Um, if we wanted to create something that would run every time this machine started up, we would do so here. Let's right click, choose new, and we're going to do a string value because as you can see all the other choices here are string values. The name that we give it doesn't really matter. It can be anything. What does matter is that the being uh, in alphabetic order, the registry editor here, the registry is the same way, it will run in the order that it appears alphabetically. So if we want it to run before the Adobe ARM, for example, we'll just give it a name of AAA. If we want to run last, we could do ZZZ or whatever the case may be. And let's configure that so that each time the machine starts, it will run the calc.exe. So the calculator is always running there. And that configures that. So the next time the system starts up, and every time the system starts up, we'll have the calc running there. Um, we talked about the run and run once. Let's go up to policies. And beneath policies, you will see that we have system policies. System policies here allow us to configure a lot of things related to the UAC. So the consent prompt behavior and about a third of these options are related to the, the UAC. Um, let's go to the don't display last username. And let's configure that so it does not display the name of the last person who logged in by changing that value to 1. 0 means that it will. Um, don't display the lock user ID. When it is locked, don't try and show whose name we need to give to unlock it. Let's set that value to 0 as well. Let's configure a legal notice caption so before the person can log in, they will see this. And we're going to say very important. We'll leave the caption on our dialog box and then let's give it some text. The text will be do not log in unless you are an authorized user. Violators will be prosecuted. And that doesn't really stop them from logging in, but it does give them official warning that we are we're only wanting them to do so. Um, we can configure it so that the shutdown without login is not possible. 
and we configure it so that the undock without login is not possible either. Let's get out of this. Let's close down. And by the way, you'll notice at the bottom here, it always gives you the location where you are. So that's quite useful. Um, if you wanted to save these settings, just these settings that we've created here, we could go to the uh, current version, for example, and we could choose to export those. That will export it into a file that then would be executable and can be executed on another machine to configure it the exact same way. We can also choose to import settings that are there. We could choose to connect to any registry on any other machine, making this a very powerful tool. And we could choose to print. Uh, print will always do whatever we're highlighted on beneath that. So if we highlighted the entire machine, it would print page after page after page of all the entries in the registry. If we only want to look at the most recent changes, we would just simply do beneath the current version, looking at the policies there. Um, let's, let's again get out of this, and let's go up to our current user's information. And beneath current user, you'll see that we have a very similar system, just like we had underneath the local machine. We have software. Here's alphabetic order. Let's go to Microsoft and to Windows again. Current version. And you'll see we have policies then that are specific for the user. In this case, we have their logon hour actions and the don't display the logon after logon hours warnings. That's related to the users currently logged in using the machine. We have the run and we have the run once. In this case, we have a flash player update, which is configured to run. The, for this particular user the next time that they log in. Um, and that will take us back out to closing it down here. If you want to look for a particular value, you don't know where it is, you can always use the find. So we'll use find to find something. Um, and it will always start from where we've begun and look beneath there. So if we want to find things related to Explorer, for example, it will identify the first location that it finds Explorer. If that wasn't the one we're looking for, we can do the find next or just simply press F3. We'll do the same thing. And we can move through the entire section of the registry here looking for values. It will find values that are names. It will find values that are hives. It will find all kinds of things. When we are done, we will exit out of the registry editor and be back to normal.